Just in, we just had a strong magnitude 5.4 earthquake. It shook southern Israel. It was in the Sharm El Sheikh, Egypt, on the Jordan Rift Valley. This is an, a very strong tourist attraction. But it sits on the Great Rift Valley. Part of that is the Jordan Rift Valley. It's a tourist attraction, and a lot of people believe that that's one of the areas that the uh, tribes of Israel in the Exodus at the time of Moses went from the Sinai Peninsula across towards uh, Arabia and to the east part of the Jordan River before that, and that's where Mount Nebo is, where Moses saw the Promised Land before crossing, before dying, where uh, Joshua crossed the tribes of Israel across the Jordan into the Promised Land. Let's take a look at the maps. So Berkeley. This is the location of the magnitude 5.4, and we're going to, this is at Sharm El Sheikh. It's a 10 kilometer depth, it's shallow. And remember that we had a tremendous amount of earthquake activity the past weeks in this area, this arc around here in the Mediterranean Sea, which is a subduction zone of the African plate hitting, going northward, hitting under the uh, Eurasian plate. Uh, we've even had the bigger quakes here around the uh, Euphrates Tigris River around um, this area, okay, that was 5.4 just a few days, this was yesterday, and uh, this is today. So the 5.4 today, Sharm El Sheikh, this is our Sheikh map, the population density is here, this is the Nile River, and um, going into the Sheikh map area, this is southern Israel right there. We see that the, okay, this is Jerusalem up here, this is the Sea of Galilee, somewhere up here. Let's go to the uh, aerial. Sea of Galilee right there. You can see the uh, the fault lines right here. And you can see basically they, they run into each other. They do cross each other. This is where we had our tremendous amount of earthquakes around here. The Hellenic, Southern Hellenic Arc right here. And uh, this is not that far away, obviously. We've even had one here, the area around this one here, the Iran earthquake, 5.1 on the 14th, again shallow. So that is this area here. So this whole area basically is active with earthquakes that are quite strong. Now this, we don't know if this is a, the main quake or if this is a foreshock. But, you know, earthquakes beget more earthquakes. Uh, unfortunately, the USGS stops that block right there. But going in, we can extrapolate the, the shake intensity of those lines. Definitely, Israel has been shaken in the south, definitely. Going back to our topographic, that right there, the Red Sea area, definitely has shaken. Now let's go to our Sharm El Sheikh. This is it right here. And this is the area where they say that uh, Israel, the Israeli tribes in the time of Moses, the exodus from Egypt, uh, uh, walked. There's That area there is very shallow. This area here is very shallow. And um, there are a lot of shipwrecks there as well. So anyway, they say that, that they could have gone through there, gone into this area, and then... Uh, that's where the prophet Moses saw the promised land but was not, did not enter it. He died there on Mount Nebo. Now, this is the area. It's a very big tourist attraction. And let's go to our Rift Valley, part of the Great Rift Valley. This is the Jordan Rift Valley. As we can see, this is the map of it. Going to our map. Okay, this is, take this off. This is part of the Great Rift Valley, which runs through East Africa, goes up the Red Sea, and then goes this way. That fault goes this way. Uh, going back to our fault, let's see where it is. There it is. And pan back out, going south to see where it goes from, leading from. It's a very big connection. It's this way here, this one here, this one here, going up this way, and then this way. Okay, this whole area is very much alive. 
and has seen a lot of four and a half to five, five and a half size earthquakes. So they're not small. The Jordan Rift Valley, that's the Red Sea here. And uh, okay, that's the Dead Sea. And this is Galilee. Jordan Rift Valley. The physical features. The um, Rift Valley formed millions of years ago, 23.8 to 5.3 million years ago, when the Arabian Plate moved northward and then eastward away from Africa. One million years later, the land between the Mediterranean and Jordan Rift Valley rose so that the seawater stopped flooding the area. Geological and environmental evol evolution of the valley since the inception of the Oligocene about 20, 20, up to 23 million years ago can be seen in a variety of sedimentary and magmatic rock units preserved as continuous sequences in deeper basins. Then you will see the deep sea transform. The plate boundary which extends through the valley is variously called the Dead Sea Transform or Dead Sea Rift. The boundary separates the, the Arabian plate from the African plate. The Arabian plate from the African plate, the uh, Red Sea rift right there. Okay, going back to this, that's where we have our earthquake. To the east, Anatolian fault in Turkey, which is up here. And that fault goes this way, as we said before. We saw that going this way. And that one there is a very, very strong fault as well. We'll see that later, but reading this, the um, Dead Sea Transform Fault System is generally considered to be transform fault that has accommodated 65 miles northward displacing displacement of the Arabian Plate. This interpretation is based on observation of offset marks such as river terraces, gullies, and archaeological features, giving horizontal slip rates of several millimeters per year over the last few million years. GPS data gives similar rates of present-day movement of the Arabian Plate relative to the African Plate, it's also proposed that the fault zone is a rift system that is an incipient oceanic spreading center for the northern extension of the Red Sea Rift. There we go. It's spreading. And of course we have a lot of volcanoes here. You can even see some of the, the lava uh, and here. Uh, and even here as well. Okay, you can see that. That's why we have a lot of oil and gas there, obviously of the uh, area there being tectonic. Okay, this is the population density. We see that it's all around the Nile River, the banks of the Nile River, and obviously if you extend, extrapolate the uh, shake lines there, it will get here, which is southern Israel. That's why I said southern Israel shook. Now, the th this is the Dead Sea, as we said, and this is the Sea of Galilee. Jerusalem is around here somewhere. Um, Yes, okay. Ariel, okay. Um, around here. Now, it's not, Jerusalem is not that big of a, uh, Israel is not that big of a, a country, obviously. It's about, what, 200 miles up to uh, the, the, the beginning of the Dead Sea. Uh, desert, of course. But still, the thing is that we have to keep in mind that the book of Revelation says that the big earthquake will occur here. This is the area of the big earthquake that will split Jerusalem from the uh, Mount of Olives, the Kidron Valley, right here. So we go into Jerusalem. Let's go into Jerusalem since we're here already. Since we're here already. Let's sit right there. Let's go in right there. And there again. Okay. Not too good of a too good but there it is okay there we go let's go to our aerial again not too good but there it is take out the population so we can see a lot better okay that's it right there that's the jordan river and that's the fault line right there and uh the jordan river we know goes all the way up that's a fault that's the jordan river is a fault all rivers are fault lines basically that line should be over the jordan river but anyway that's the sea of galley which is a volcano crater crater lake that's a volcanic crater lake. And there's all types of um, spring bath areas since antiquity. 
even the Romans had fantastic looking at luxurious bathhouses around here. And of course you have hot spring baths because you have Magmonder there. That right there. Okay. Shall we go in a little bit? Okay. There we go. We're going in too much, but uh, I've never been, but uh, this, as you remember, has an area, it's an area full of hot spring baths. Lake Tiberius, Kinneret. That's it. What is this? The excess, I have no idea. But anyway, uh, let's go back to our, our uh, area of our earthquake. And you can see, obviously, it did shake the south area of... Uh, uh, five people reported it. And uh, this is it. We don't know if we'll see. We'll have to keep an eye on it to see what other activity we will have. Uh, because, as we said, we had a, a tremendous amount of activity in this whole area, as we said. And the earthquakes are not small. Okay. And 5.4 that we had yesterday up here in Lake Van, which is the meeting of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. As we know, those, again, are... Uh, areas of uh, fault lines. Going back to this, no fewer than four major tectonic plates, the Arabian, Eurasian, Indian, and African, and one smaller tectonic, the Anatolia, the Anatolia being this one, are responsible for seismicity and tectonics of the Middle East surrounding region. Geologic development of the region is a consequence of a number of first order plate tectonics, including subduction, transform faulting, and mountain building, and crustal extension. Mountain building in Pakistan, Afghanistan. And let's go towards the Tibetan Plateau, Pakistan. Eastern margin of the Mediterranean region, there's complex interaction between African, Arabian, and Eurasian plates. The Red Sea Rift is a spreading center between Africa and Arabian plates, as we read before, with a spreading rate of about 10 millimeters a year near its northern end and 16 millimeters per year in the southern end. Seismicity rates and size of earthquakes has been relatively small along the spreading center, but the rifting process has produced a series of volcanic systems western, across western Saudi Arabia. Western Saudi Arabia. Okay. And also here, around Iran. And that's where we had the big earthquake uh, two days ago. And this one here. As you can see, something is going, there's a lot of, they're not small. They're not small. So, you know, I'm, I'm not easy about that. I don't feel easy about this. Do you? Um, okay, the, uh, though the African plate to the west, Arabian plate to the east are moving in a north-northeast direction, moving this way, north-northeast, the Arabian plate is moving slightly faster, resulting in left lateral strikes of motion along the segment of the boundary. Historically, earthquake activity along Dead Sea transport has been a significant hazard in the densely populated Levant region, Eastern Mediterranean, the Levant region, region being around here, Levant, okay. Um, okay, for example, November 1759, near east quakes is thought to have killed somewhere between uh, 2,000, 20,000 people. The northern termination of the Dead Sea transform occurs, occurs with the complex tectonic region of southeast Turkey where the interaction of the African Arabian place and the Anatolian block occurs, involving translational motion of the Anatolian block westward. Anatolia block going west this way. Okay. And with a speed of 25 millimeters a year, so that's pretty fast. Now, the right lateral strike slip north Anatolia fault north Turkey accommodates much of the westward motion between the Anatolia block and Eurasian plate. We have had uh, the 1999 7 plus, uh, so it was 7.5, I think, strike slip earthquake, and then three weeks later we had it in Athens, Greece. So um, this is the area of our, um, you know, we hadn't had small ones unless they just don't plot them, but these are all pretty big. Okay? They're not small. And uh, this one was the latest one that we had a couple of hours ago south of Crete, and again in the Hellenic Arc, and this part here, this is really worrying to me. This is too close for comfort to Israel, and the, um, God forbid, 
Okay. Anyway, please let me think. Let me uh, let me hear what you think and leave your comments. Please subscribe and share. Thank you so much. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.